smell it burning. Put it, <laughs> put it that way. I could see it burning. Uh, I had friends in the tower. Uh, we lost friends in the tower. Um, I suppose, again, that you can't take things for granted. Um, and, and this is just a, a generalization. Um, it's made me understand other things better. And, and desperation as one of them. And I, and I do think that um, you have to look at this as isolated with regard to the people who've done it. Uh, not uh, racial, uh, not religious based. Uh, it gave me the opportunity to understand that afterwards. Um, but with regard to personal effect, um, you know, I mean I can name names that, you know, they just don't come to the barbecues anymore. You know, there's a, there was a feeling of uh, immediacy and loss. Uh, with regard to, you know, and also survivors that I know that were in those towers, which I feel grateful that <clears throat> they can come to the barbecues. <laughs>
obviously has its, its its value. I think that you know so many different subgenres of metal have uh, helped the other subgenres because we've crossed over. I mean, there's obviously people who like the black metal stuff that have come over to uh, some of the thrash stuff, and some of the thrashers have gone over to the black metal stuff, I and mean, we've done shows with Immortal. And, uh, and and done shows with other black metal bands, and and we we, we actually played a um, thing called, it's called Hellfest, not Hellfest, maybe Hellfest. It was in Norway, not the one in France. It was a black metal festival, and it was um, the night before Easter, and we were the token thrash metal band on the bill. And it was 12 o'clock when we went on, and it was a very serious crowd with white face paint and the. And the spikes, and we finished the first song, and I said, "We're overkill from America, and I'd like to wish you all a happy Easter." <laughs> well, the point is, is I didn't know what kind of response I was going to get, but it was a great laugh. So I think that the idea is that people are people underneath, and uh, I like the black metal scene from that perspective, but not to the point of, uh, let's say, seriousness. I don't think what other people do is is any of my fucking business. You know, I'm not. I like nicotine. I like alcohol occasionally. Um, I take uh, a thing called prednisone on the road, but I don't take drugs to get high. I don't like smoking weed. I don't like uh, dropping pills. I don't like cocaine. Have I done them all? Yes, of course. Uh, but made my own mind up afterwards. Um, it's not for me, uh, but when it comes to other people, I think they should make up their own minds. I mean, this is their life. That's what it's all about. I'm just not a weeder. I'm just not a, you know, I mean, I don't even do it recreationally, uh, not at a party. I mean, it's, it's so funny because uh, for years I've been running off the side of the stage uh, every time the band plays a lead. And the rumor is, is that I have a little cocaine party back there. But, yeah, but, but it's obviously not. I go back, I have a sip of beer, a little Red Bull, I have a little bit of water, sometimes I light a cigarette. And the idea of me running off has always been, uh, from the beginning, was stage fright. That if I'm not singing, I have to be out of here. And it just became something that I incorporated into my routine of performing. So, no cocaine parties. <laughs>